Yeah, we'll worry about that. Okay, here we are. This is uh, Steve Stargell with me, and I am Dr. Abraham Abraham Weisfeld. And Steve is a veteran uh, Panther activist, a thinker, and uh, we have a lot to say to you today. Now, uh, let's begin. Steve, uh, you were just telling me about an incident that took place in your neighborhood. You know, that's astounding. Yeah, um, we heard about an incident in Los Angeles County um, that occurred a year ago. And the sheriff, uh, Sheriff Luna, had a press conference a day ago about this incident, which occurred before he became sheriff. Um, the station where the incident occurred is called Palmdale. It's in a mostly blue collar and poor area of LA County, the northern northern part of the county. Just like Pittsburgh is the northern part, of, the northern part of um, Contra Costa County, and in, 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 um, within within the Oakland Bay area. I mentioned Pittsburgh because they're very similar. This is areas where people who have don't have the money to live in in a certain area are moved out to where they have ch ch um cheaper rents usually unfortunately schools are not quote as good and um the police just wreak havoc so um, so this this officer stopped a car with some women and their children in the car the women allegedly didn't have car seats for their children, so he gave them a felony arrest, if you can believe it, for child endangerment, mm -hmm. and wanted to seize the children from the women. Uh. Yes, okay, and so you know it's going to get bad. And during the, the confrontation with the women and the men in the car, the sheriff punched the woman in the face two or three times, just for no reason, while she's holding her children. Mm. So this has been kind of saying to me, um, this is an example of the kind of brutality that women, especially black women, Latin women, women who are poor, um, face from law enforcement. Um, the other thing that's, that I share with you, which you said that you, that you heard about, was the rape club that, uh, that's occurring in Northern California in a town called Dublin. And Dublin is a pretty quote-unquote nice suburb of Oakland. Uh, schools are growing, property values are going up, but there's a there's a federal prison and a prison camp. The prison camp is for men, the federal prison is for women. And for the past three or four years, there's been a rape club going on in this prison, meaning uh, correctional officers, the warden, the chaplain have been harassing sexually having sexual intercourse within the prison, um, taking pictures of pictures of women naked in the prison, just just um, abusing their power of authority over, over these women to sexually harass and degrade them. And if, and if women spoke up about it, they were put in solitary confinement or transferred to another prison. Hmm. Now, this there have been some news recently about some people being some people being arrested and convicted, but the point is again these women are imprisoned, so they're not able to go to Starbucks, go 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 and buy a taco or some donuts from a store, or t or, or take a stroll down the street. They have no authority over themselves, besides that which they, which they demand, and, and when they complain about being harassed and sexually abused and raped, they were put in, in solitary confinement and sent to other prisons. And this has been, all been documented by the FBI and by, and by federal prosecutors. Mm -hmm. so this is the kind of abuse and abuse of power and brutality that women are facing at the hands of the U.S. system. And this happened, these both happened within a year of each other. The people in Palmdale don't know the women in in um, um, Dublin FCI who are mostly there for low drug drug offenses. They shouldn't even be in prison, but because they got busted on some drug crime, they put them, put them in this, this, this jail. These women don't know each other, but because of the stance of law enforcement and the court system toward women, they're, they're, they're subject to physical beating 
as in Palmdale, or sexual abuse as in as in um, Dublin. And we don't have to live this way, mm. but we are. Mm. So we have to continue to fight and organize, expose, support, give comfort to all those who are facing these, these horrific types of oppression. Mm. It's terrible. Mm. Yes, I read about the Dublin case. <laughs> it seems as if, you know, the guards, you know, are more... Uh are guilty of a greater criminal offense than anybody else, you know, in the prison. It's like inverted reality. Yeah. And in the case uh, of, uh, of of the police you know, harassing um, um, a mother and her children, uh, I've heard of this, you know, before uh, the scenario, you know, in Arizona, where uh, mothers, you know, with their Mexican children driving along, they get stopped for no good reason. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's a child care agent there taking the kids away. And then there's a white couple waiting to take the kid. And all of a sudden, the, the child disappears, you know, just like that. And the just like that. Left with no recourse. You know, like this is like, you know, really degenerate, you know, uh, power structure. It's incredible. And it's getting worse. Yes, it's getting worse. I agree. It's getting worse. Yeah. That's all we have to organize a way of fighting back. Uh, of winning our liberation, of comforting those who who have been treated with such such in and dignity, so they can reclaim their humanity. Yeah, you know there should be you know like ordinarily you know if you needed security you know you would call up the police you know nine one one or something. You know there we should have our own you know code. We should have our own you know security. So when people get into trouble like that, you know, with the police or child, uh, you know, kidnapping agency, you know, then people should be able to call up, you know, like our emergency number and get our emergency aid, you know, to get somebody out there, you know, to video it, you know, to, uh, you know, speak right. up, you know, with the legal, you know, uh, protocols that are necessary to protect people right. in the face of the yeah. police so that they can't get away with it. And if they do try to get away with it, you know, then it's on video and then the police can get charged themselves. You right. know? And then they right. can be right. learned, you know, you know, like Pavlovian dogs. You know, they need to be trained into being humans. Uh, that's the way it should be. I, I agree. What, what's curious about this, that in the federal prison in Dublin, well, this, this is part of an, an ongoing drama with the U.S. federal prison. People may not know there are federal prisons in the United States. Then there are state prisons. Then there are county jails, okay? Mm. So the federal prison is run by a group called the Bureau of Prisons. It's, it's controlled by the United States Congress, Senate in the House. And the Bureau of Prisons is re renowned for its its corruption, for its, its you know, a notoriety for being lawless and the issue of cameras you mentioned, the cameras don't ever work. I mean, when this when this guy, the the, the famous American, whoever he was, um, oh, what's this guy's name? He was um, he 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 committed suicide in prison. Uh, um, everybody knows him. But the point is, when he committed suicide, supposedly or was killed, supposedly, the cameras weren't working. And mm -hmm. same in this in this prison, the cameras never work. So mm -hmm. while the police, while the policemen in many cities now are forced in the United States to wear to carry um, uh, cameras on themselves to record what they do, and that's why this video was released by the LA County Sheriff. In prisons, most time the cameras don't work, mm -hmm. and there's no and there's no kind of build. Mm -hmm. What you're saying about having someone with a camera mm -hmm. is very important. Get inside the prison, no one is going to come with the camera. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's, it's just going to be the, the prisoners' word against against the, the prison guard. Yeah, and yeah. and while the women when while the women were being raped and sexually abused, the abuser said to them, "No one's going to believe you. I'm the ch the chaplain <laughs> was raping the women. <laughs> the chaplain in yeah. in the name of God. <laughs> I'm 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 a I'm, I'm a force you have sex with me. The chaplain was saying, "No one's going to believe you. I'm the chaplain. You're yeah. a prisoner." Yeah. So yeah. you know, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Th that's like when the uh the uh, churches in Canada, you know, were holding were uh administering the uh, boarding schools for the uh, kidnapped, yeah. you know, indigenous children. You know, they would rape them, you know, and, and they were supposed to be religious figures, you know. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. so bizarre, you know, like and the neurotic, you know, to think that they actually have 
you know, some sort of uh, sacredness, you know, to their to their existence. Uh, and then they go ahead and, you know, they are barbarians. You know, it's incredible. Thank you, they are barbarians. There's a book I've been reading, yeah. um, Columbus and Columbus and other other um I, I would say barbarians. That's not, that's not the name of the book, but it's a book about Columbus. Uh-huh. And this gentleman he, this gentleman called it the Wetico, the Wetico syndrome of absolute power, uh depravity, theft, violence. No there's no egregious conduct that's beyond these people. Yeah. There's nothing that they won't do. And there's no no penitence, no remorse, no accountability, nothing. I did it mm-hmm. like like a, a couple of days ago. I was watching a video from Ukraine, and a uh, Ukrainian assault squad was driving down a little grassy knoll in Ukraine. They get out, they go hide in the bushes to attack somebody driving down the street. So a, a civilian. A civilian was driving down the road. This is just like a field somewhere, okay? Mm. And they opened fire on the they opened fire on the civilian. Mm. They kill the civilian and somebody in the back seat. They yeah. take the body out. One person starts kicking the body. The other person tries to apply some first aid. They they pick him up, throw him in the throw him in the bush, push the car to the side, get back in the car and drive off. Yeah. I saw this. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not making this up. So yeah. I'm saying this 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 behavior of what they call wetikos, just uncivilized, mm-hmm. uncouth, violent. Power is all I have, and I use it with absolute uh, um, indiscretion. Yeah, this is what these women in the prison. This is what that family driving down the road, just driving their little car, two seater car, you know, a Toyota or something. Just you know, I'm driving, mm-hmm. I was driving down the road, or the women. Um, getting pushed in the face in, 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 in Palmdale, that's what they're facing. So we have to organize to change our society, to revolutionize mm-hmm. our society, because this we don't have to live like this. This mm-hmm. is ridiculous. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Power always thinks that if it can get away with it, then it's okay. You know. That's right. So we're not going to let them get away with it. Yeah. That, and the, these boys, they, they, when, when they all get back in, in, in the, if, the, um, the in, infantry fighting vehicle, they just drove off. I uh, said, damn, man. How do you mm-hmm. do that? You just murdered two people. Mm-hmm. They weren't even soldiers. They just, you just killed them and threw mm-hmm. their bodies in, in the trees and drove off. Oh, man. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. something else. That that's that that is not cool at all, man. Yeah. Uh-uh. Well, that's uh-uh. the general strategy, you know. They're gonna make life unlivable for the people in the uh, Donetsk and Lugansk, uh, you know, uh, nationalities of the Donbass region. And uh, they're just going to make it unlivable there, you know, with cluster bombs and all that, so that people are going to have to leave. And then, you know, they yeah, consider that up, to be a victory, yeah. you know, because they've yeah. been able to uh, ethnically cleanse, you know, the territory that they claim to be their own, you know. That's under a very the good way of putting it. That's a very good way of putting of, uh, it. Uh, uh, this new Ukrainian imperialism, you know, as if they think they can get away with it. But no, they're facing what in effect is the Red Army, you know, has come in, you know, to stop them, (laughs) together with the local militias, of course, you know. Yeah, you a very good point there, yeah. 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 But in the United States, you know, like the acceleration, you know, the exponential acceleration of the phenomena of the mass shootings there by mainly white supremacists who are going in to attack, you know, whoever they think doesn't belong, you know. And this is... Very true. You know, like this is like a, like uh, as a couple of Americans that I met here in Mont- Montreal said, uh, not said, but they agreed, you know, this was like a slow civil war happening in the United States right now. And it's increasing. I totally agree. And these two examples I mentioned are, exa- are egregious examples of that civil war. I mm-hmm. think it's very, very, and it happened a year, a year apart, 400 miles apart. People don't know each other, but the same type of incident occurs. The same thing. Mm-hmm. Nothing different except the type of incident that occurred. But the brutality, the power, the hubris, the arrogance, mm-hmm. the unaccountability, mm-hmm. and and the trauma, the trauma and psychological damage that those women or those victims have to suffer through. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Agree. And at the same time, okay, <laughs> you know, there's this sort of mentality in, in the uh, Western Christian capitalist countries that if you don't make it, it's your own fault. 
<laughs> oh well. <laughs> oh well. Have, uh, have a look at some of the some of the facts here. I think I have a a, a share screen here. Um, I don't know if I can make it appear correctly. That's okay. Let's give it a try. Uh, I I haven't done this successfully before. I'm not sure how to share the screen. Oh, I think I got it here. Yeah. 31.46 trillion dollars. The national debt of the United States of America. Here it is. You know, all this money, okay. where is it gone? You know, like, you know, how come people are so poor if, you know, all this money has been spent? You know, what's it's been spent on? The national debt here. I'll give some objective reporting here. The national debt is what the federal government owes creditors, just like personal debt is made up of different types of debt, such as public and federal government trust funds. It represents the sum of past annual budget deficits. U.S. national debt total, $31.46 trillion in May 2023, and increasing. So, well... I hope this can be seen, you know, because I've got the, uh, the I can background see on on uh, on on blur, so it may not appear as it should be. You can see it fine. But yeah, you, uh, you can see it. Okay. You, you can see a thirty-one point four six trillion, and you see a national debt check. Yeah. And, right. yeah. and 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 uh, I think that the uh, the number of. Uh, you know the um, military budget in the United States now is approaching approaching about a trillion a year, and uh, how much is going to uh, to the Ukraine military, to the NATO military? <laughs> Man, that's I mean, a big you know, token I, I town. Keep on hearing various numbers, and they keep on you know increasing. They keep on increasing, um, and they take you know Ukraine is known for its corruption. They take the guns and sell them overseas and ship them off to somebody else. You know, um, and then they start getting them cluster weapons. You know, which it's just it's just it's just making. So once the Ukra once the Ukrainians start using them, then the Russians go, okay, we can use them too. And I, I think I really I really think just speaking here, it's interesting that both the U.S. and Russia do not sign the agreement to get rid of of the of the cluster weapons. So somebody must have had them, and somebody else said, okay, well since we're enemies, I think I I I kind of need to have them too. So there's there's such a there's such a um a uh, despicable use of, of munitions against humans. Most of the world doesn't even allow the isn't even allowed. They they have conventions against their use. And I think it's a really a damn shame that the, the way this war is ending. I hope the war is ending soon with with an increase of lethal weapons being used. The the the, the only people getting impacted are the soldiers and the civilians. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. The yeah. ones who have no power really are power. Or they have power. They're not using it, but they have the only ones who are not in the seats of power. One of the seats of power, they're not feeling it. They might, the no one's gonna cluster, cluster bomb them. No, they're not. It's just the soldiers and the civilians who are gonna be. Especially, I would predict in Ukraine, they're gonna use them cluster bombs in Donbas. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no way they won't use them. Yeah, yeah. Because that's who they hate mm -hmm. with their anti-Russian ideology. Yeah. And they 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 bomb civilians for at least um nine years without stop. So what why why would they stop now? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. at least that's a sad that's a sad commentary, but that's yeah, that's really how I see it. I'm sorry. Yeah, if they're supplied with munitions, you know, if they've already used, you know, the the rockets that they've been supplied with, the HIMAR missiles and stuff. And what do they attack? Civilian targets, because they Always. want the civilians to leave, because that's their target, you know. They're not, you know, interested in liberating, you know, the people of the former Ukrainians of the eastern Ukraine, you know, <laughs> from Russia. No, they're not interested in that. They're interested in getting rid of those people because it's the territory that they want. They want the resources. And they want right. the uh, the industrial infrastructure that's situated there as well, you know, like right, yeah. right. So yeah, many people, many people, many people are not aware of that history of how 
um, at least I, 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 I gleaned a little bit of history a few weeks ago that actually Eastern Ukraine was historically part of Russia. And after the Bolshevik Revolution, there was something happened where mm-hmm. the 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 Ukrainian Socialist Republic didn't have in didn't have an industrial base, and that's why, as I as I be, am beginning to read, that's one of the reasons why you, the Eastern became part of Ukraine was to provide them with a working class and with and with those raw materials. Uh-huh. That's why they want. Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. That's why I read this. I heard. Yeah, yes. people haven't seen this this video, but yeah. really historically, that part of of the of the land was historically Russian speaking, Russian oriented, and and there was a need or an issue when the Bolsheviks took power in 1917, 1918, that they had to. Well, the Ukraine, someone in the, in the Ukrainian SSR asked. Asked either the party or someone in government, can we have this as part of our of our territory? Because we need workers, we need skilled skilled technicians, we need factories that make our our nation more comprehensive. That's why it's important because that's where all the industry is. Right, you 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 hit the head the nail around the head. That's where yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so it's not just farmland where the crops and the grain grow, but they have to have some. They want the industry. That's why they want. That's why yeah. they're pissed. That if this if, if 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 this area and Crimea with access to the Black Sea remains Russian, then what they what they what they used to having is is isn't going to be around anymore. And I'll, 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 I think that's over with for them, but for the Ukrainians. But time will tell what happens. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I read about this uh, case as well. You know, it was Lenin who proclaimed. You know the you know, in effect, the independence of the Ukraine. He recognized the Ukraine under the principle right. of national self-determination. And right. it was the Ukraine, you know, without the Donbass, because that's, you know, the Ukraine-speaking part, you know, of Russia. So some Ukrainian communists came to Lenin and said, you know, couldn't, you know, like you include, you right. know, like Donbass, you know, in this uh, right. Ukrainian Republic, because it's, you know, better for military strategy. It was in the middle of the Civil War. And that Civil War was, you know, crazy time you know because you had the yeah. black army of the anarchists as well fighting for the liberation of the ukraine against the white army of the monarchists you know the czarists and against the red army of trotsky who was trying to put down the anarchists because he wanted to include ukraine in russia <laughs> under orders you know from the communist party i suppose he was also ordered to go and attack poland but you know he sort of conveniently allowed that battle to to be lost so you know, there's so much, you know, that is uh, behind all of this. And you yes. nationalists, you know, don't even recognize, you know, that they owe their uh, independence, you know, to Lenin. You know, they won't recognize they should, Yeah, they, they, really, they, they really don't. They really don't recognize you know, And that's that's a very important historical point that we need to get circulated. Because I was stunned to read them. I just came across, I was looking on Telegram one day. And I, I have all these Telegram channels. And I have to use my phone to translate it from Russian to English. I really must want to learn it if I'm using that. Huh. And I ran across this. I was like, wow, yeah. I couldn't believe it. It was a video. I said, oh my gosh. I was like, I felt so stupid not knowing it, but I didn't know. Yeah. Hardly anybody knows that. It's incredible. Yeah. 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 It's incredible. Yeah. I, I have, uh, I have, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I got a figure here. Uh, there's about, uh, uh, Yes. Now, you know, there's about uh, 60 billion already, maybe probably more, you know, that's been supplied to the Ukraine military by the United States alone, you know, not even including the other uh, members of uh, NATO, which should be called the North Atlantic Ter- Terrorist Organization. But uh, agreed. Agreed. <clears throat> so where do they think they're going to get this money from? Not just, you know, putting everybody in debt, but, you know, like $300 billion in gold reserves from Russia has been stolen. You know, yes. like it was stored in the Swiss yes. banks or whatever, you know. Yes. Like, they, they stole just, the money. Know, $300 billion stole the money. in gold has been taken, you know, stolen from Russia. Money. And not even Russia is saying anything about this, you know, it's sort of weird. So that's one of the things that's yeah, spreading I, in the banking system yeah, in the West. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish, I wish, uh, maybe it's being fought out in some other channels. But when they just took them, they just they seized the money. Then I think early, 
earlier this year, I want to say yeah. March, or April, the, the the EU decided, well, we're just going to take the money. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just like, you know, outright, again, that wet cold view. There's nothing we can't do. There's nothing we won't do. We'll take yeah. everything you have. If you don't like yeah. it, too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. You know yeah, this we'll is called see. looting. You know, and, and even the word loot, loot was stolen from the Hindu language, you know, because the British, you know, were looting all of India. And they still have all of the uh, artistic artifacts, you know, in the museums in London, you know. Oh, man, that's so wrong. <laughs> and, and this looting uh, also includes not only the 300 billion from Russia, what about the 15 billion from Libya in New York banks, the 20 billion from Libya in Canadian banks, and the another 20 billion from Libya in the Swiss banks? They haven't been returned to the Libyan governments. In in uh, Tripoli, you know the National Government of Reconciliation. No, they've taken that as well, and they're holding on to it. <laughs> so, you know, this what kind of a system is this? And <laughs> I don't know. Is it capitalist? The well, capitalist to, imperialist robbery system. It's, That's it's, what it is. it's more than capitalism. It's it's you know like worse than capitalism. It's you know like we have to invent a name for it. You know like it's uh, it's incomprehensible. You know, like, but, you know, I have a story of my own to tell you. You know, I was arrested just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> Why? I was arrested. Okay. I was, I went to a meeting of the Holocaust survivors at the Jewish Community Center because I'm a second generation Holocaust survivor. My parents, you know, escaped from uh, the ghettos and, and got into, uh, you know, went into uh, the USSR as refugees and were given refuge there and given, you know, in you know, like a place in the society and they had work even. <clears throat> so um, I'm coming out of the meeting and on the post outside on the sidewalk in front of the Jewish community center is this, you know, like poster, you know, plastic poster for the Israel day parade. You know, so I say, Oh, you know, I used to organize a contingent, you know, to go and counter protest with Palestinian flags. But, you know, here in Montreal, you know, you know, it's it's so, the left is so divided that we're not able to sort of, you know, put together a United Front for that purpose. Okay. So, I, so I'm walking away and I said, no, I got to do something here, you know, like, and so all of a sudden, you know, the words and a free Palestine were written on a poster in an empty space, you know, in small, relatively small. And then, you know, like went away on the bus. But uh, before I the bus came, you know, I saw that there was a security guard who came outside and took a picture of it. So, oh, well, you know, big deal. So two weeks later, I get a call from the police and they say, you're being charged with criminal mischief. <laughs> okay, you come in and, uh, and uh, to receive your charge, you know, at a certain date and time. Okay, so uh, I agreed to do that, you know, but I slept in. <laughs> okay, first thing. So then finally got, you know, the charge. It was a charge of criminal mischief, less than $5,000, which under Canadian law means that you only get put away in prison for two years, maximum. Penalty. Only two years. Only two years, you know. Okay. Mm. So, so next thing I know, the next day, what happens is that I got a, an email, another email from the, uh, from the police saying that my book, in the Jewish public library inside the Jewish community center yes. has been expelled. You know, they say that Your the library doesn't expelled. want my book uh, anymore. Oh, okay. God. Even though it's listed the in the catalog. The police, and called, like that, the police you know? told you this? So I said, what's going on here? You know, like, so I, I, you know, the, I asked police, who's, who's, you know, doing this? You know, I said, oh, it's the same organization that, you know, is charging you with criminal mischief, which is itself a question, you know, because that got all mixed up. And so I said, really, you know, uh, who was the person, you know, who took my book out? And they said, oh, no, that's secret. You know, that's anonymous, anonymous person. It's just an organization that's doing it, the, the Zionist lobby. So, you know, I contacted the, the library. You know, I'm, I'm banned, you know, from the Jewish uh, Community Center until my first court hearing. I had to sign this paper, you know, saying that I wouldn't go back there. And, and if I didn't, they would have kept me in prison. So I did. I signed it, you know, until... Uh, August 21st. And, you know, the library, you know, when I contacted them, said they didn't know anything about this. 
you know, <laughs> like it wasn't them that did this. So I said, you know, I contacted the police, and you know, like, you know, library never, you know, like refused my book. What's going on here? Who's doing this? So they said, okay, 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 we'll take the book back. So I won the case, first case, you know. So the police are going to bring back my book into the library. You know, the there police. should be a video made of this, you know, showing the police bringing back the book, you know. And I, you know, like, how can the police take a book out of a library? You know, it's never been done before. But in my case, it has been done. But, you know, they were now. forced to bring the book back because I threatened them, you know, with charging whoever did it, you know, with theft and censure, you know. So police didn't know what else to do. You know, they had to take the book back, right? <laughs> right. So, wow. but then That's I have awesome. to go to court, you know, for the charge of uh, these words having been written on the poster and a free Palestine. You know, it's not even saying, you know, it's not like crossing out the word Israel, you know, and writing over the word Palestine. No, I didn't even, I tried, you know, like the least possible sort of declaration to be made, you know, saying, okay, you know, like Israel exists, you know, like, you know, how about a free Palestine too, you know, like according to international law, according to the Oslo Interim Agreement, you know, according to the 1948, you know, partition plan voted and accepted by the United Nations and adopted supposedly with Israel's consent. You know, there's supposed to be a Palestine there. Where is it? You know, huh. what? In Miramala, there's one building that says PLO, Palestine Liberation Organization. And on the side, it says the state of Palestine. And that's it. <laughs> that's the state of Palestine. That's all. That's it. And that's all, <laughs> you know, that they're going to get. Yeah. It's uh, incredible. So those words, you know, are now considered to be criminal, you know, as if, oh, yes. And the police come from the hate crimes division of the police of Montreal, too. The hate crimes division. Yes, oh yes, 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 yes. So, so they try to make a big Megillah, as we say in Yiddish, you know, out of this whole thing. So I'm going to have uh, much more to say about that. Please do. I, we need to mobilize support for you. I'm defending myself, you know, like no lawyers, you know, lawyers don't know what they're doing. And lawyers, you know, always go for the least possible sort of level of confrontation. They call it the, the lowest hanging fruit. You know, that's what they'll go after. And usually it's just one point that they're trying to make in the court before the judge, you know, like me, I've got, you know, like a whole list of points to be made, you know, like they're not going to get rid of me, you know, like in one hour, no way. If they want to go to trial. I'm going to give it to them, you know, like full, full blown. And they're going to get, you know, everything, you know, brought up and then they have to testify too, you know, and I can question them. And they have to provide all of the, uh, you know, the documentation that goes along with this. They have to provide everything that's been, you know, written about, you know, my case because I have to defend myself. So, you know, the court orders them to give me what's called a discovery. You know, courts yes. are very useful, very important, you know, feature of civil society. And it's not even part of the state. You know, the courts and the judiciary are independent of the state. That's why the Netanyahu government in Israel is trying to subordinate the Supreme Court right. Right. to the right. Knesset parliament there. Right. Yeah. Very important. Mm. Right. Very good. So we don't have much time left uh, in this 40-minute broadcast. Okay. So uh, I, I think we hit some good points today. And I, I appreciate having the opportunity to speak to your viewers, to share what's going on here in the United States. And also, I um, I'm concerned about your situation legally and want to see what I, what we can do to garner some international, international attention to it. I think we need some attention. Yeah. International organizations, organizations internationally should be writing out, you know, a statement of uh, support yes. in my right. case that I could submit to the court. And I'm not right. just going to submit it in paper. I'm going to read it into the transcript of the court, you know, there you go. listen to yes. every single word. Yes, we need that. Good. We definitely need that. Okay, great. Wonderful to meet up with you, Steve. And I think we've talked about things that you know you don't hear about anywhere else. Right, right. And I, I and I I look forward to our our next conversation. Wonderful. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.